Hi! Today I'm going to show you how I processed my vocals in this unreleased track I'm working on. I am by no means X-Factor material, but with some creative processing even my voice can end up sounding kinda cool, at least in my opinion. The first thing I do when working with vocals, before I do any sort of mixing, is making sure I got a substantial number of decent takes to work with, which is crucial for the next step. It's also a good practice to always make everything as good as possible as early in the process as possible, and you'll see that is a common theme throughout this video. If my voice sounds weak, I don't just rely on mixing solving that for me. Instead, I take some time to warm up my voice with different exercises and then I try again. The next step is what I like to call the Frankenstein. I call it that because I cherry pick the best part of every take and put them together, making the ultimate vocal take. So what I usually do is find the take I like the most and use that as a starting off point. Then I listen through it a couple of times until it becomes apparent what words needs to be swapped out. Maybe a syllable is being too harshly pronounced in one word, or maybe it's a little difficult to make out exactly what's being said in another. Then it's just to listen through the other takes and see if there are better alternatives. Doing this can be a little bit tedious, but I promise it's worth it. It just saves you so much time down the road. And this is what I'm talking about. Fix problems as early as possible. Otherwise, they will just pile up and become impossible to deal with. When I'm happy with my Frankenstein monster, I consolidate it into one file and toss it into new tone to tune it. I like to turn the center to 100% so it's easier to see where the notes are. Then I listen and tune everything that sounds sour. Then I take center back to 0% and drop the new file into the playlist. With the groundwork out of the way, we are ready to look at the mix. First in my chain, I have Waves Tuner. In this case, I used it to make my voice more robotic. I wanted it to sound a little fakish. And that's a subjective aesthetic choice rather than a necessary part of the mixing, which I would say the manual tuning we did earlier is. Next, I added a vocal rider which is automating the volume, making sure nothing is too loud or quiet. This makes the compressor's job a lot easier. Alternatively, if you don't have a vocal rider, you can also manually automate the volume. When it comes to compressing, it's first and foremost about smoothing out the dynamics, making sure you can hear every word clearly. But it's also about compressing till it feels right, making the vocal fit the vibe of the song. Here, for instance, I've gone with a more aggressive sound, pushing it a little harder than I usually would to achieve it. Next in my chain, I have an EQ. I cut all the lows that are not important for my voice, then when I start to hear a noticeable difference, I switched to a bell curve and scooped out some of the frequencies instead of cutting them. This made my voice cleaner without making it too weak or unnatural sounding. I also boosted the highs to get more air. After the EQ, I added another compressor. I find using multiple stages of compressors with different settings gives me a better result than just pushing one very hard. Then after the compressor, we have another compressor, but it's a multiband compressor called C6. And I used the lead C preset from it to achieve a nice sparkling high end. No real fire to ignite. Next, I added a little radiator, giving my vocals more bite, which contributed to the aggressive robotic sound I wanted. I saw the snow fight. After applying so many effects, I needed to add another EQ to tame some of the high mids and cut the lows that got generated by the little radiator. Then we have little Alter Boy where I automated the formant, making my voice alternate between sounding dark and light, which I think sounds interesting. No beauty, no real life to see. Finally, on the chain, we have a de taming those sharp syllables. No beauty, no real life to see. 
from my delay and reverb, I used Sense. I cover how I set that up in my template video, which you can check out after this one. On the delay send here, I used Cavill Crusher, which distorts the signal before it passes through the delay. Then it goes through this severe filter, which collectively creates a big distinction between the lead vocal and the delay. I have also linked the mixer fader to a peak controller on the vocal bus, so that when the vocal is playing, the delay is ducking away. So basically sidechaining the delay to the vocal. The way you set that up is by loading up a peak controller on the vocals, then right clicking the parameter you want to link, select link to controller and choose peak controlled peak. Then you have to set the volume to a negative value so it ducks out of the way. And the reason the bass is set to 80% here is because I've linked the mix fader and that is its original position. But this here is a bit of a bad practice. I would not recommend automating mixer faders. I should have used a fruity balance instead. This is because it can be a bit of a headache later when you are mixing. Guess I was just a little lazy when I did this. I also recommend sending your sends to a return channel where you can cut the lows and sidechain them, giving you maximum control over your effects. To achieve a fuller sound, I use doubles under my lead vocal. Doubles are just multiple recordings of the lead vocal. I use two so I could pan one left and one right, making it sound super wide. My soul, there's no fight, no real fire to ignite. When you use doubles, they always end up with slightly different timing, so you have to go in and manually line the consonants up. I like to make cuts and then use the slip tool to put them in place. Just go through the takes like this, listen and look after transients that are out of time and line them up. Finally, I recorded some harmony, which complements the lead vocal with different notes, adding another level of depth. My soul, there's no fight, no real fire to ignite. My head, there's no beauty. So, to conclude this video, here's what I started out with. My soul, there's no fight, no real fire to ignite. And here's what we got now. My soul, there's no fight, no real fire to ignite. And my head, there's no beauty, no real life to see. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Before you click off, if you enjoyed it, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I promise to bless your feed with great FL Studio content. If you are interested in more FL Studio content, you can check out my Patreon and simultaneously support what I do. See ya!